blended upbringings have collided in the last 24 hours. And I think that could well be the first time that each of them's got into this kind of a rage and learnt to modify their own behaviour and their own coping in a way that's made them bigger people. I'm going to put a wee bit over the soil, mate, and then I can sort of take it up a bit. I'd like to think somehow that yeah. something to do with the monastic framework. So I'm feeling it a little bit sort of uh, encouraged, hardly dare to think that maybe this is going to hold and go deep and long, but I think it will. I'm going to start watering all of this, the other stuff. Yeah. With the men once again feeling positive, it's time to start considering how what they've learned here will affect their lives back in the outside world. At the heart of monastic life lies the simple reality of God's call. And therefore our aim is to enable you to hear God's call. And the word we normally give to God's call is vocation. Vocation. All right. For Tony, with his growing sense of spirituality, the prospect of applying monastic values to a job in the soft porn industry is particularly challenging. I had a strange one in church today. And I don't know whether you can explain this stuff rationally, but uh, I've been thinking about this vocation thing, you know, in terms of this soft porn thing. And my brain started really freewheeling. It really was as if someone was doing the thinking for me. It was quite a weird thing to be going on. Was it God or was it me? Or is God, our God and me, the same person? And uh, is my supposed listening to the voice of God just the uh, me listening to my own voice of reason? Who knows? The question of vocation is also a tricky one for Nick. At the age of 37, he feels he is still searching to find his place in the world. Five years ago, he rejected the idea of becoming a priest in favor of a career in academia. His enthusiasm for the spiritual life was tempered by the very real personal sacrifices it would entail. But since visiting the Carthusians, Nick has been asking himself some difficult questions. I feel, once again, this sense of vocation to the priesthood. I don't even like saying the word. It makes me very uncomfortable because... And yet I can't deny, I can't deny the fact of the feeling. What I, what I'm not, what I have to determine, therefore, is whether that feeling is genuine whether that feeling is based in truth. The head is saying, come on, don't be stupid. This is ridiculous, you know, you're, 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 you're not up for it. Um, and yet there is an insistence, uh, more of a sort of instinctual urge that is pushing me, pulling me in that direction. With only two days to go, Tony is growing increasingly agitated at the prospect of returning to his normal life. Aware that his past behavior has been uncaring and even self-destructive, he's worried that what he's learned in the monastery may not be enough to sustain him. He decides to seek advice from his spiritual guide, Brother Francis, during their last session together. Gary said something to me earlier about what I'm going to do when I get back, job-wise. He said, are you going to give up? Are you going to give up your your job, you know, sort of basically sort of on kind of like moral, mm. oblique, spiritual grounds. And I said, well, no, th no, I'm not, because uh, I'm not going to go sit in a church reading the Bible and, and eating, you know, pot noodles. Mm. You know, I need to live, I need to, have, mm. I need, need, need my lifestyle, you know, mm. so. <clears throat> so I'm just a little bit worried. Part of me really wants to keep the whole thing alive mm. and carry it through. Mm. And... Um, and I know the part of me that the minute I get out, it, it, there'll be a, a little bit of like, whew, mm. you know, sort of 
been there, done, yeah. done that, and it will fade. Mm. Um, I want to give you something to, um, I think, to help with what you've just described, really. And I think that over these last week, I think it is, you've been talking about vocation. And I think that's, that's very important. And vocation's about, you know, discovering who, who you really are and maybe what you should really be doing. And I think that's what we try and do here, is to discover who we really are. And uh, I, want to, I, want, I want to give you this stone, this white stone. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think for several reasons, I think. We've got, our, we've got our Christian name, we've got our family name, but we've got another name, and it's called our white stone name. And that's, that comes from the book of Revelations where the angel says that there's your name is written on a white stone in heaven and i think our vocation is to find out what that name is and uh, and i think that's that's a lifelong quest but you could keep this in your pocket yeah and you could just hold that um when it when it gets tough but also f remember the story that you're trying to work out well what's my white name what am I really meant to be doing? Who am I really meant to be? And I don't think you'll go far wrong. Cheers. I hope that'll help with that. Well, I hope it does as well. I mean, just talking, just sitting here now, I just feel, comp I do really feel quite confused by this whole thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, it's, it is easy to kind of verbalise things and... Or to verbalise anything mm. for the sake of yeah. wrapping it up in, in words, but, yeah. you know. I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't bother. I think it's a big mystery and we make a mistake to try and explain it away. to finish yeah we'll finish now before we do I want to give you a blessing <clears throat> I'm going to put my hands on your head yeah let's move that out of the way <clears throat> Tony May your soul calm, console, renew you. May the light of your soul guide you. May the light of your soul bless the work you do with the secret love and warmth of your heart. May the day never burden you. May dawn find you awake, alert, approaching your new day with dreams, possibilities and promises.